Hello everyone, I'm Jeanette Camping from Henry Stewart Events and we're delighted you've joined us for our latest Creative Operations webinar, Protecting the Value of Your Visuals. Just a couple of housekeeping points before we start. We'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation, so please send them through via your GoToWebinar column. And we are recording the webinar and you'll all be sent a link to the recording later. And now I'm delighted to introduce our speaker, Paul Melcher from Imitag. Paul is VP of Business Development and has more than 20 years of experience in visual content licensing, technology innovations and entrepreneurship within world-renowned image companies. And he has been named by American Photo one of the 100 most influential individuals in American photography. Thanks very much, Paul. Over to you. Thank you, Janet. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on, on where you are in the world. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, attend our, our webinar today. Uh, greatly appreciate it. So um, we are going to talk about, um, well, first establish what the value of, a, of, a, of visual is, and then explain to you um, how to protect that value uh, in the simplest and easiest way possible. Um, so, first step is the creation of value. Where does it happen at what stage? So, um, a product at the beginning is just um, a recipe. It's you're putting things together, uh, putting that thing with this thing and, and wrap it up and together and, and you have a product. An image, uh, an image of that product starts telling the story of that product. It starts creating a universe and um, a context to that product. This is where a visual creates a value. Uh, to the product. Now, there's different ways to tell a story, and that the brands understand very well. So, um, you can have one product um, explained and showed in different types of, of stories, depending on who you're talking to uh, and who do you want to convey a message. The idea behind it is that your story has to become the story of the consumer. They have to fit and they will fit that story into their own narratives so that they fit um, your visuals and your content with their own daily life. So where, uh, and, and how do you quantify this value? How does uh, that create, uh, and, and how much value does that create? So um, obviously the visual has value to you and to your company because out of nothing it creates a story and um, a context. It also has, as we just saw, a lot of value for your consumer, for, for your customers, I'm sorry, uh, because it creates a relationship between your product and their lives and their narratives. So the value of your visual exists into that fine balance between the product, the raw product at the beginning, and the final um, estimation of, of where does that product or service ends up in their narrative? There's another way to calculate the value of a visual. Um, and that's the simplest way is that people are stealing those visuals. Um, they grab it and they use it for other purposes than what you initially um, were looking to, to use it for. And that's probably um, one of the best way to calculate the value of your images. So how do you preserve that value? Images, obviously, and, and, and videos, any visuals actually travel a lot, uh, especially these days, more, more than ever. So, and, and they take a, a lot of different paths before they reach a customer and, and before they take their full from online. So how do you preserve um, the value created uh, from the creation um, to its distribution, uh, as well as beyond um, its distribution and, and creation. In the creation process, for example, uh, an image is not just closed into a, a simple environment. You will need to uh, set it to the talent for approval, for example, or, or maybe to an outside studio for, for retouching. 
uh, and that illustrating image that we have on that slide um, is not there randomly. It's one of our actual clients that uh, uses outside ret retouching a lot when they're working on uh, on posters for TV shows and, and, and movie studios. And obviously, when you're dealing and sending um, visuals outside of your company, you always have a risk that there might be um, a, a leakage of that uh, of those which, which, um, sorry of those visuals. You'll be sending uh, at the time of distribution, the one after the creation of, of the visual um, is done. You will be sending those images probably to uh, to the retailers so so they can start preparing their brochure, whether it's, it's online or, or or in print. Uh, the same way as as getting the uh, point of purchase signage ready so that when the launch of the product is, is, is ready, they're ready to, to do it, or even provide some of uh, your journalist contacts with um, some of these visual ahead of time and, 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 and under a embargo. But all these are also channels where those visuals might leak and destroy, um, completely destroy their value. And what does that mean? So um, having sensitive, visuals released before the launch dates can have dramatic effects and 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 we'll see some of them uh through this example one is obviously dramatic effects through uh, sales so when a new product is, is is announced or leaked before its launch all the current version of that product stops selling because obviously consumers are going to wait for the new one to come out so the earlier that there's a leak the more damage to the sales have been done as uh as sales of older products are uh, put on hold by, by consumer. It can break as, as well um, the whole narrative of a, of a, of a service or product in the case of, of this example where, where a, a leak of the poster informs the consumers about uh, the storyline and therefore kind of breaks the, the, um, the surprise effect um, of the consumers when they were about to go to the movie theaters. Worse is that there's a leak from, from a, a retouching studio when you actually break your confidence and, and actually damage greatly maybe your relationship with talent as well as, as the, the, the product effect uh, whereby the images leaked or, or shouldn't have been um, out at all um, anyway. There's also issues with your visuals after they've been distributed. So um, the product has been um, sold for a while and, and being uh, available for, for a long while, uh, but it could be misplaced with um, linked to, to content that is contradicting with uh, those visuals that, that you have created. It can be uh, manipulated. Uh, Photoshop that uses MEM and, and the same as being a, a destructive result to, to uh, to the product itself and obviously to the brand itself and not not least but to the story uh, that you are trying to explain. And last but not least probably um, after distribution, well, um, it could be used, the original image could still be used to hide and to help sell content, counterfeit content uh, production and, 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 um, and product. There's not only bad things about um, people stealing your visuals. Uh, there's actually good things, and, and our guy here will will uh, dance to that. You can also uh, generate a lot of earned media. Copies of your images being used in, in, in uh, traditional or non-traditional media, but uh, with a positive uh, reinforcement about the fact that you're sending out, your images are sending out a positive message and something that people want to share and people uh, value to, to that point. So we're going to pause here a little bit and and, and uh, check that you guys are, are listening and, and paying attention. I ask you a question is basically is is do you uh, do you uh, have experienced one of these um, this situation uh, and we'll be launching a poll here for for you guys to uh, to answer.
waiting for you, uh, for everyone to, to have the time to answer. And, and, um, and yes, I think uh, I think everybody has put in their uh, the answer. So I think we can we can share the results. Um, so yeah, most of you have not yet um, experienced that some of these uh, examples that we show, but are, are obviously uh, very much in concern. And, and fourteen of you have, have fourteen percent. I'm sorry, of you have uh, experienced that as um, one of of these example of of having the value of your images being uh, destroyed in one of these ways, as as we have seen. So, thank you for for uh, for your answer. We'll move on to. Uh, to our slides now um, and continue with, with our presentation. So what do we do here in the MedTag? So how do we solve this, this issue without um, interfering in, 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 in the streamline and workflow of how you create and, and, and share content? So um, let's see the uh, technology behind uh, the magic. And, and I'll show you here an example um, how it works with with images. Um, we take an original image. Uh, here it's actually a rendering uh, of a product to, to be launched. Uh, and we put uh, an invisible watermark on it. As you can see on, on your screen right now, um, there is no visible differences between the original image and the watermark image. Even if you blow it up, uh, you will not see any additional noise or, or any anything like that. And that's on purpose, as we worked extremely hard to make sure that a watermark was not only strong, but also uh, protective of the quality of the image, uh, so that you could use the watermark image as if um, the same way as you use the original image without altering anything or, or, or um, cutting down on, on the quality of the content. And that was very, very important. Just on a, on a more technical side, the watermark is inserted at the pixel level um, in the images so that, uh, and, and in only in places where there's information in these images so that we reduce or completely ignore uh, the creation of noise as well as, as minimize the, uh, the total size of the file. You can then, or anyone can, if they know that the watermark is there, keep in mind that it's invisible, so they have to have already know that the watermark is there. Uh, you can dramatically crop the image, turn it into black and white, uh, change its resolution. Uh, you can flip it over as well. You can actually do a screenshot, and as you can see, the watermark will, will remain. Um, it is what we call indestructible. There are ways to destroy the uh, the watermark, uh, but as you can see on, on the example in front of you, you have to destroy the original file so much that it doesn't make any sense anymore. You can't uh, use the resulting image um, anymore. I've been talking mostly about images up to now just for the sake of, of this presentation, but what you've heard uh, also works for videos and, and actually, we do have uh, special um, items and videos that I want to show you right now, um, because obviously videos has their own um, appearances and, and has their own challenges as far as copy. So uh, we took 4K videos from from uh, from YouTube here uh, that that um, should be running, but are not because of the constraint of of. Um, same as we did with the images, uh, you cannot see the watermark. Uh, obviously, it's the same principle. On the left is the watermark. Uh, video on the right is the original video. Uh, and this link, by the way, is, is is available on our website, so we can I'll share it with you later on if if you want to play around with it um, by yourself. So uh, that watermark on video is also resistant to camcording. That is, if somebody goes into a movie theater and decides to to film what they see on the screen, 
uh, we can still detect the existence of the, uh, the watermark. Um, the same is if uh, the video is cropped heavily. Um, so in this scene, we've... Uh, we have made engine start. Four, three, two, one. Um, if the video has been compressed, as you can see here, I'm not going to play every example, if you've seen it. Uh, if it's an excerpt, so this is just a, a six second, for example, of, of part of the video, it can still recognize the, the watermark. If it's turned in black and white, uh, if the sound is, is turned off, and then uh, if all of the above are applied uh, to a video, we can still recognize uh, and identify the watermark. So, um, going back to our slides, this is our technology and this is the core technology that powers everything that we do at Imitag and how we, we perceive and, and protect images and visuals. So on that technology, uh, we did build two services. One, which we call Imitag Monitor, which is uh, the possibility to, as the board, the, the, now the the title says monitor your content uh, through web crawlers, but also on print and, and PDF and, and, and others and, and broadcasting. Um, as well as the second service that we call leaks, uh, which is more centered into the identification of the source of a leak. Um, when when a leak is, is discovered. So let's drill down a little bit into um, these services to, to, to see which one more specifically it does. So as I said, the monitor uh, uses similarity uh, and watermarking for certification of matches. So we have uh, house crawlers, in-house crawlers that monitor uh, millions of millions of websites um, randomly looking for matches of your images uh, and um, once detected alerts you of their presence along with the url the positioning of of the file on and and the name of the website and the source of, of um, the url we bring that along with a reporting so that a smart reporting so that you can uh, immediately identify which files have been copied more or which urls are, are the ones that are more into uh, copying your content or, or many many other things uh, to that aspect so you can start taking intelligence decision based on data that you received um, on, on the location of your content whether authorized or not uh, and how it is being used and, and, and so on. The leak I'm going to do uh, for, for demonstrating how Imitech leak functions, uh, I'm going to do a little live presentation. And for that, I'm going to be taking the role of, of three uh, different characters to uh, explain a little bit how it works in, in, in real life. <laughs> Excuse me. So we have Dana, who is uh, the creative ops and the person that, that uh, creates the, uh, the visuals. We have Rachel, who uh, works at the printing company and preparing to do the brochures and, and the uh, point of purchase uh, um, prints. And, and then we have uh, Joel, who's uh, our blogger who loves to blog about new products before they come out and, and uh, talk about their release um, ahead of time. So in this example, Dana has a new product, uh, in this case, a bunch of headphones that have come out and then she needs to uh, send those products to uh, a variety of, of um, vendors that she has outside the company. Um, and so she uses Imatag Leaks to be able to uh, monitor and control what happens to her files. So um, she's gonna call her campaign new headphones. She's gonna choose a couple of her files uh, images to she's gonna to for the sake of not taking too much time, we're gonna pick 
couple of of the images. So she's gonna send um, some to John, some to printing company A, which is, as you guys remember, Rachel. Um, and then to a company where she's gonna enter a secret code because she doesn't wanna know her. She doesn't want anybody else to know who she's sending that to. And she's gonna create a campaign. So what it does in the background, uh, it will create a unique watermark for each set of images per recipient. So each recipient will see, or will see, I'm sorry, the two, uh, the two images, uh, each one will be marked with their own unique watermark so that it is identified and mapped to the uh, recipient. We have uh, processing going on. Um, oh, I uploaded an image with the wrong file size, which is the right wrong file format. Uh, I thought that happens. Let me see. So, as you see in, in um, details here, I can obviously um, add another uh, image. I'll pick an image that is not the right for format, although it seems that it was a JPEG. So, uh, here we have our three. Um, let, me, uh, let me add that image. Um, there we go. The other image has been added. So we have our three recipients um, that are uh, going to get those images. For it. So we, we generate those files. Um, so it's six files to, to generate, obviously, three, two files per each recipient. So it's three times two. Um, each one receiving their own um, individual watermark. So I'll be ending up with three different folders, um, which you can see here, I have now a zip folder for the secret company, a zip folder for company A, and then a zip folder for uh, John. So I can download uh, those and start sending those um, files to each recipient accordingly uh, using whatever method I, I'm um, familiar using we transfer or email or, or anything like that. Jump to our desktop here um, and we are unzipping the content. So as you can see we have our three folders plus the original files obviously. Uh, so I'm sending this folder of these two images to printing company A. Uh, to our friend Rachel. Rachel has a little uh, thing about Joel, and so she decides that she's going to send um, this image to the blogger Joel um, and saying, "Hey, look! I just received those those pictures of this new product. It's not coming out yet, but I'll I'll, I'll share it with you so you can post it on your blog." So so Joel is really happy. He goes to his website. So this is uh joel's website and he said oh i'm going to publish those uh image of of, um, of the headphones i just received uh, and i'll be the first one to uh to do so so he changes that image he's going to use that image he received from uh printing company from uh from rachel uh he's going to crop it a little bit there it goes, he does, okay, here's the new headphones are coming out. Exclusive images before they're coming out, you're the first one to see, and he published it, and there it is, live on his website, um, the headphones. I'm Dana now. I'm back to being Dana, I'm seeing this website. Somebody sends me this URL, I say, hey, I see you, you're doing it. The product is out there. So Dana is really, really, really upset, obviously, and saying, hey, what is that image? So she can't download that image. So she's going to do a, a screenshot of that image. And say, I need to find out where that image should come from because I just sent it to these three people that secret company, the printing company, and John. And, and uh, one of them, uh, obviously, has, um, has used that, that image. Uh, 
without authorization. So I'm going back to my, uh, you can attack, um, lead detection tool. I'm going to upload that headshot, that screenshot, I'm sorry, I just did, there it is, and try to find out um, who leaked that image. And so it's uploading to the servers of Pimitab, and there it is. That image is the image I sent to printing company A, so therefore, it came from uh, the Joe, I should call them and say, well, our, our relationship is now um, over. We'll start using a different type of vendor from now on. So that was the demonstration of our leak uh, detection solution based on, on our invisible water. Thank you for uh, your attention and, and we'll, uh, we'll take questions uh, from you. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, we have had a few questions. Um, the first one is, what formats do you support? Um, so we, um, in, in uh, images, still images, we support JPEG and, and PNG. Uh, those are the formats we've been asked and support by default, but uh, we also can look into different formats depending on, on uh, client's needs. As far as uh, videos, uh, we, Obviously, the uh, MPEG and, and, and um, things like that, and then the, the compression or codec, uh, the most uh, used one are, are the ones we, we support uh, the most. Thank you. And the next question is the file size affected by the watermark? Uh, very little. That's something we worked hard on, on making sure that it was uh, as Little as little intrusive as possible. So the watermark uh, adds a little bit of, of size to, to to an image or to video, but it's it is almost uh, imperceptible um, in most cases. Okay, thank you. And the next one is how fast is the processing in brackets marking? Um. So we, we have two ways to watermark uh, content, visual content. You can do it locally on your server, so you can do it through our API. Uh, obviously, if it's done through an API, then you have to, to count in the, the connection and the speed of the connection and obviously the file size. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, on a video um, as well, the videos obviously are, are a much larger size, so, so they might take a long time, but on average, um, a third of a, of a second is, is something to, to consider on uh, watermarking um, an image uh, or, or a video. That's the average size, uh, I'm sorry, the average time for, for watermarking uh, video content. Thank you. How to integrate Imitag in my workflow? So we offer an API uh, that allows to easily integrate uh, all our solutions, both the Imatag monitoring and the Imatag leaks into any type of workflow. And, and we have customers that do so already. We have partnerships with uh, some dam companies already that, that have uh, already integrated our solution into their uh, offering. So those uh, obviously can can work out of the box, uh, and then we 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 can help. Uh, we will help as much as we can if it's a, a very specific type of workflow or anything like that to see if we can uh, to to make sure that it's integrated in in any existing workflow uh, as well. Thank you. And then someone's asked, how much dam integrations have you got for now? How many in, in how many how dam? many how many dam integrations have you um, got now? We have the latest. I believe it's it's uh, we have three about four dam companies offering uh, Imatag Monitor uh, and Imatag Leaks into their uh, their current offering, and okay. we are in conversation with with, with many others uh, into developing that and and 
having those ready by the end of this year uh, as well. Yeah. Very good. And another question. Hello. In the last example, Dana has, has to do a screenshot of the leaked image. What if she doesn't know it is out on the web? So um, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, we have the possibility to to add uh, the monitoring. That is, we have the possibility to add our crawlers to to start looking around for for copies of those images if they are. So so it's an added service on leak, whereby you can um, you can monitor um, and we can do the same with, with video um, to to see and to detect if if a leak happens. So so that's the way to. To, uh, to know. Uh, so we offer that as well. It's kind of a hybrid between monitor and, and, and leaks. Thank you. Does this work with images that have been posted on social media? I understand metadata is stripes paired with image when images are uploaded to most social media sites. Uh, yes, so it does because our watermarking is not in the metadata, it's in the image itself. And, and actually, our watermarking uh, is resistant to the compression done, for example, by Facebook, uh, and resist any, any, uh, any of these compressions done by social media. So yes, it is um, identifiable. The, the issue with social media is that their closed environment, uh, Facebook or Instagram, uh, for example, so it's much harder to, to crawl uh, and to detect because of the fact that, that those companies don't let uh, anybody crawl their content. However, uh, we have ways to, to, um, to monitor some of the channels, we're allowed to do so on channels or, or in Facebook, I'm sorry, and, and Instagram. So to be able to detect, and when you're talking about leaks, uh, for example, you're usually talking about the same type of people, the same people um, doing those leaks. So you'll you'll have uh, specific channels or specific individuals that are specialized in leaking new photos of cell phones or or headphones or things like that. So. So it might not be even necessary to crawl the entirety of Facebook to, to find leaks because uh, it can be sort of rounded up to a few known uh, or well-known suspects um, in those social media uh, environment. But to go back to the precise question to the beginning is that because our watermark is in the pixel level, even if the, the metadata is, is erased, it doesn't change anything. We'll, We'll uh we'll find it. Um, yeah, no problem. And then another question: What are people doing once they find a leak? What percentage What percentage of time do they get compensated for their work or the work removed? Another way to state is ultimately: What effect does monitoring have on the value of the asset? Okay, uh, great question. So, so well, there's, I think there's two questions in that question. Part is, is what do people do? So, the obvious one is is issue an immediate takedown uh, because it's an unauthorized use of, of an image. Um, that takedown could be a nice takedown and, and being followed um, thoroughly by the publisher. Uh, it could be a, a legal one where lawyers get involved and, and, and lawsuits can be. Um, Threaten or, or, or execute it, um, which is much rarer, obviously. So that, that would be the first um, and the most common type of, of reaction that, that happens. The second link to that is obviously once the source of the leak is, is identified, a bit like the example I, I, I showed, uh, the brand terminates their relationship with, with the vendor that is responsible for leaking their content, obviously, or whoever the person or the company is because that is uh, detrimental. As far as how does it matches and, and links back to the value of the image is something we, we talked about a little bit in, in, our, in well, a lot in, in our presentation is that an image that is leaked before uh, their intended um, issue date and release time has a lot of, of consequences. It could be in sales, 
it, it, it has to not in, in, in the brand awareness, the, the surprise effect. <coughs> I'm sorry. So it can affect a lot of, of um, the resulting behavior of the marketplace once that that image has been leaked to uh to the outside world without control some companies will go with that leaks and issue or release the product at that time because they have no other choice others uh that spend a lot of time making sure that that um the release date was was properly scheduled will try to hide it as much as possible but it it, it costs the company a lot of time a lot of money obviously uh and a lot of resources uh, and therefore, any leaks that can be prevented uh, is, is a major, major cost saving for for any company um, releasing products on a, on a regular cycle or, or things like that. Um, how to quantify it? Again, it depends on on the product. It depends on on the, on the type and the size of the company itself being being targeted. But but it could reach you know when you're dealing with with a new model of a car, or maybe even more new models of phones or things like that, uh, in the millions, in the millions of 10 millions, if not 100 millions of dollars of, of lost uh, revenue and, and, and impact uh, in those cases. So it, it's a lot. Thank you. And then someone's asked, how do you compare Imatag with tagging solutions like imaga.com? or watermarking solutions like digimark.com? Um, so with tagging solution, Imatag doesn't tag anything. Um, it's, it, it, it doesn't add in the sense that tagging would be adding keywords or words or, or anything like that. So Imatag is not in that space at all. Imaga is a company that, that does, uh, it uses intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence to recognize the content of images and then uh, suggest appropriate uh, keywords linked to it. So it's it's great for automatically keywording images. Uh, image tag is not at all in that space. It does not recognize the content of, of an image. Uh, it doesn't need to uh, for a process. Uh, and as far as Digimark, so uh, image tag is, is closer to Digimark and what it does uh, but it has a lot of differences. Digimark does not work, for example, with black and white files. Digimark uh, is much easier. Um, it's much easier to erase the Digimark watermark. For example, it does not resist uh, a Facebook image compression. Uh, so if, if it's published, an image is published on Facebook, it will lose the Digimark uh, compression and, and uh, lose the Digimark watermark, I'm sorry, and, and, and thus be be non identified anymore. Digimark does not work with videos. Um, we can go on and on with that. And, and Digimark also does not have their own uh, web crawler. They use third party web crawlers, which obviously limits them in, in what they crawl and how they can customize the crawls and, and things like that. So, so um, we are the stronger and the most efficient solution uh, in that space. Um, by far, yeah. Well, thank you. That was the last question, Paul. I'd like to thank all of our attendees for listening. Um, we hope to see some of you at our future online events. Um, any last thoughts, Paul, before we go? Uh, yeah, sure. We, we um, All the demos I showed you are, uh, some of them are actually, for, for the watermarking, the image are available on our website, as I said, for the, uh, the video as well as the, um, the styles, the stills, so you can try with your own images to see how it affects uh, your files and how invisible it is. Um, and then obviously if you get in contact with us, we'd be happy to discuss your specific needs, your specific environment, your specific workflows, uh, so that we uh, we can work with you and, and, and see how it fits uh, your specific needs. So uh, feel free to contact us. Great, thanks very much. Goodbye everyone. Bye, thank you.